Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is Simone. Coming to you with this morning's devotion. We'll wait a minute or two for people to start. Joining us this morning. We'll wait a minute or two for people to start. All right. Good morning again. Morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Sister Dawn. Good morning. All right. So I will go ahead and start again. Good morning. My name is Simone Brissett Tate, and I am coming to you from the Breakers Covenant Church International, where our lead servants are, uh, are Miss Hines and Rosanna Hines. I want to thank the leadership and, and ministry team for giving me the opportunity again to speak to you um, and for leading this morning's devotion. Good morning, Brother Demetrius. Good morning to everyone that's joining this morning. Good morning, Brother Ken. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Minister Mashira, good morning, good morning. And today's topic, we'll be talking about Bible 101. Bible 101, all right? So before I want to snap my page here. So before I, um, I start, I'm going to open up here with a word of prayer. My pages are going all over the place here. So let's open here with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless your name. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are so grateful, Lord, that you have blessed us to see another day. We're on the other side of the earth. We are thankful. We are grateful, God. Lord, your name is great and greatly to be praised. Father, we can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough. And we give you thanks, Jesus, for blessing us, for breathing breath into us, for waking us up, oh God. God, you're awesome. You're mighty. You're wonderful, Lord. We just thank you. We just praise you. We just honor you, Lord. We just honor you, Lord God. And Father, as we um, come to meditate on your word this morning, I pray, Lord, that even now that you will prepare our hearts and our minds, pray that our hearts will be ready to receive your word even now, mighty God. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for everyone that's under the sound of my voice, everyone that's listening or watching this devotion, mighty God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that they're their spirit will be watered, their their hearts will be ministered, oh God, unto, so that they can grab a hold of your word, mighty God. And let your word, Lord God, minister to them throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month and the years to come. Father, I just honor you. I bless you. I magnify your name. I give you glory and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Again, good morning to you. For those who are joining this morning, thank you so much for joining in our devotion this morning. And we will be talking about Bible 101. So we're going to keep it basic. So in our last Bible 101 class, again, good morning for those who are just joining. In our last Bible class, uh, Bible 101 uh, devotion, Minister Pierre, he set the, he set, um, the, the foundation with the basics. He mentioned who wrote the Bible, when we know it, according to 2 Timothy 3, verse 6, it was, all scripture was inspired by God. 
Um, it was given to God by men and men write it on tablets. They wrote it down. They wrote out down the instructions that God gave them so that we can have it to read today. So all scripture was, it, it comes from God's mouth. It's not man, man's uh, man-made or man-written or man's inspiration. It's God's inspiration according to 2 Timothy 3 verse 6. And in our devotion this morning, make sure you have your notebook, uh, your pencil, your paper, highlighter, and also your Bible this morning so that you can take notes. We're in a Bible 101 class, so you want to make sure you have your Bible, right? All right, so Minister Peter talked about that, about who wrote the Bible. Again, God's inspired word by man. He mentioned also that there are 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. He also mentioned the first five books of the law um, called the Pentateuch, uh, the first five books of the law. And, um, the, in, in, um, and the Jews call it the Torah. Uh, he also mentioned about, not only did he start with Bible 101, um, but he went right back to the beginning, Genesis 1. So that covers what Minister Peer, um, I'm not doing justice to what he said, but please go back and watch the devotion by Ms. Minister Peer Abrams about Bible 101. And um, if you're watching this, uh, this second edition for the Bible 101, please go back and watch the first one so that you can get an understanding of what I just said. But today we will be... We will still keep it basic. Keep, still keep it basic. We're not going to get too theological or anything like that. Well, hopefully not. Um, but I want to keep it very basic this morning. So we're going to continue our discussions on Bible 101. Growing up, we used to sing a song in Sunday school. I don't know if people still go to Sunday school today, but you never graduate from Sunday school. Or now they have a they call it Christian education. Um, but growing up, going to Sunday school, we used to sing a song that says, um, can I sing? All right, I'll go ahead and sing. But it says, read your Bibles, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bibles, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, spray every day, and you grow, grow, grow. If you don't read your, read your Bible and forget to pray, and forget to pray, and forget to pray. If you don't read your Bible and forget to pray, you will shrink, shrink, shrink. So if you don't read your Bible and forget to pray, you will shrink. Uh, yes, Pastor Kwame, thank you. I leave the singing to you. I'm not going to take over your ministry of singing. Um, I leave the singing to you, Pastor Kwame. But I just thought I would bring back that song from um, Sunday school where we sing that song. And what the song is pretty much telling us, if we read our Bibles every day, we'll grow and we'll have a stronger relationship with God. We'll have a more understanding of his word. We'll have a more understanding of who God is. The thing is, we don't want to know about God. There's a difference. We don't want to know about God. We want to know God himself. We want to have a relationship. We don't want to, we, we don't want to know about our, 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 our chief, commander in chief. We want to know, we want to have a relationship with him. There is a difference. So I, I bring that song back. But let's go back to Joshua, Joshua 1. And if you're taking notes, Joshua 1 and verse 8. And this is where God, um, Moses, um, uh, Joshua was Moses' protege. And he, um, he uh, uh, Moses died. Um, Joshua is his, his, his successor, the one that will lead them into the promised land. And so God gave Joshua some commandments. And if you read in Joshua 1 and verses, I'm going to start from verses 7. And it says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night 
so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So if you want to be successful, if you want to um, have a right relationship with God, if you um, uh, want to be strong and courageous, if you want to get ammunition for your day, this is what you should do. Read God's word. Read God's word and get instructions. If you want to be successful in life, it's not money that will make you successful. It's not your career or your possessions or who you know or what you know. That's not what's going to keep you in this world. It's the word of God that is going to keep you. So meditate upon it, as Joshua said. Keep it on your lips. Let it um, be in your heart and be careful to obey everything that is written in it. That's the instructions that God gave Joshua. And the word of God still applies to us today. It, uh, it, it's not only for, for Joshua and, and, and his generation, but it, the word of God, it never gets old. That's one thing. Again, the word of God is real and relevant. It's written how many long years ago, many thousands of years ago, but it's still real and re relevant. You can't take, it, it, it always refreshes. Sometime you read a word today and then tomorrow you get a different revelation like you never read it, like you've never read it before. So some people may think that the Bible um, is a boring book. It's boring. It's a book that you read to fall asleep or you should only read your Bibles on Sundays. If you're reading your Bible only on Sunday, you're in trouble, all right? So, well, I got news for you this morning. The Bible is your weapon. It is one of our spiritual armors. According to Ephesians 6, verse 10, it says, to put on the whole armor of God. If you didn't hear me, the scripture says, Ephesians 6, verse 10, put on the whole armor of God. It didn't say, put on the breastplate and leave the helmet or or and leave or don't tie your 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 your, your shoe or um don't bring your sword you can't go to war without sword right it says put on the whole armor of god so it it has to be complete it can't be you put on what you feel like putting on today and tomorrow um you put on something else or put on what suits you you got to put on the whole armor of god Ephesians 6 verse 10 but verse 17 it says it says take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit what is the sword of the spirit which is the word of God all right the word of God that's the sword of the spirit we cannot go to war shooting blanks let me say that again you can't go to war you can't fight the devil shooting blanks you need ammunition and where you get the ammunition it's in the word of God. The scripture says that we wrestle not against, I believe it's 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 or 5 verse 10. Um, Bible scholars that's on the line, please drop it in the, the comments if you, if, you, if you can reference real quick. But the scripture says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high and low places. So how are you going to fight spiritual warfare? The only way you're going to fight it is with the word of God. And if you don't have the word of God in you, if you're not meditating on God's word, if, if, if you're not hiding God's word in your heart, all you're going to do, you can't say to Satan, it is written. Hello? You can't say to Satan, it is written when you've never picked up the Bible. You can't say to Satan, it is written when you only open your Bible on Sunday morning when pastor is preaching, if you open your Bible. Or nowadays, most people use their phone, but that's if, if you, that's even if you have a Bible app, you may be de, you may delete it after church and then <laughs> load it up Sunday morning right before church start. But you can't be shoot you can't be going to war shooting blanks. You need the Word of God. You need ammunition. So if you are going to follow the Word of God, if you're going to follow the Bible, again, this is Bible 101 class. I'm not going into um, Old Testament survey or anything like that this morning. I'm just keeping it basic, keeping it real, keeping it relevant this morning. If you're going to follow the word of God, if you're going to follow the Bible, you have to accept the word of God. The, all of it or not at all. Again, all of it or not at all. You have to accept God's word, God's truth in its entirety. You cannot accept some parts that suit you. 
and then the other part no nah, this don't this does not apply to me halfway obedience is still disobedience let me say that again halfway obedience is still disobedience so we have to obey god's word god's word is light god's word is truth god's word according to ephesians i'm sorry hebrews hebrews james hebrews 4 and verse 12 the scripture says i know i bookmarked it maybe not all right so it says but the word of god is alive and active sharper than any double-edged sword it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart it is alive it is active sharper than any double edged sword you want to find out who you are read god's word if you want to find out who god is read god's word we have to accept god's word in its entirety ephesians ephesians 1 Ephesians 1, it's found on page 1,975 in my Bible. <laughs> Ephesians 1 and verse, uh, um, which verse? Verse 17, let's read from verse 17. No, I'm going to read 18. It says, I pray that the heart, the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened. In order that you may, this is Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. When we are reading God's word, we have to make, we have to ask God to enlighten us give us inspiration give us wisdom so that we can understand give us understanding so we can understanding so that we can know how to apply god's word again sometimes you read the word of god and it, it just like sometime uh but then the next time you read it and 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 before we read god's word let me just tell you we have to ask for um inspiration we have to ask for it um, interpretation we have to ask for revelation so that we can understand so when you read God's word we have to pray that our hearts will be enlightened so that we can understand God's word it is light and it is life God's word it illuminates I'm sorry illuminates God's word it gives light it sheds light on every dark areas of our lives God says um, we should choose life so that we may live Deuteronomy 30 real quick and verses 11 to 19 but I'm just going to focus on um um pretty much um this saying that we should obey God's word but anyways um God give us the solution to life already you know that this Deuteronomy 30 verses 19 this day I will call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death blessings and curses you know one of the greatest thing that god has given us is the light the sorry the right to choose and here he's telling us um he doesn't force himself on us um he gave us the choice to whether we're going to choose him or not but deuteronomy 30 verse 19 now he's saying choose life and death choose blessings and curses uh or curses um then he says, now choose life so that you and your children may live. He already gives us the answer. He says, choose life so that we may live. So if you want to live a prosperous life, a fulfilling life, I want to say a prosperous life and fulfilling, it, money doesn't have anything to do, it, to do with it because money can't give you joy and buy you peace and, and salvation and all that. Um, only God's word can do that. So God's word, um, we should choose this life so that we may live. The Bible in its entirety, it's our rule of faith and practice. We cannot pick up and choose the mandates. Um, I'm sorry. We cannot pick up the word of God. 
we cannot pick i'm sorry we cannot pick and choose what we should follow we have to believe god and live um for god if you are not this morning if you are not growing spiritually if you are still doing worldly things then you need to check your bible study and your quiet time with god your prayer time when you read God's word, transformation must take place. When you read God's word, you will be refreshed. You will be revived. You will be empowered. You will be renewed. And it makes the word of God, it makes you wise. It gives joy to your heart. It gives light to your eyes. Um, the word of God, it warns us. Um, um, according to Second uh, Timothy 3, verse 16, it teaches us, right? Um, it warns us, it teaches us, and it, uh, it also rewards us. Matthew 19, I'm sorry, Psalm 19 and verse 7. I want you to read Psalm 19 in its in, in entirety, in its enti entirety. But um, verse 7, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. Some One version says, reviving the soul. The statues of the Lord, we're talking about the scriptures here. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. And verse 10, it says, they are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. And if I'm kind of dating myself, well, and I'm not, not, not that I'm not too old, but there is a group back in the day called a cappella, and um, they sang a song. Uh, this song, I won't sing this time. I'm going to leave this one to Brother Kwame or Pastor Kwame. Um, but they sang this song about the laws of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. There's, they sang from the scriptures. So the law, God's word, is, it, is, it is not... It's, it's God's word is refreshing and it renews us and it gives us joy and gives us peace, gives us comfort. It gives us instructions. God's word, it is not chains on our feet and on our hands. God's word doesn't handcuff us. Um, we cannot choose, but God's word doesn't handcuff us or, or put chains on us. It's not boring and God's word does not take the fun out of life. If you want to have life and have life more abundantly, we're going to find it in God's word and in our relationship with God. When you read God's word, transfer me. Um, I'm sorry. Let me go back down. Uh, we can choose life or death. God's word points us to danger and, and warns us and points us to success and guides us. When we buy a product, it always comes with a manual, right? An owner's manual. Here I have the car seat manual. I have my kid's wagon. He's telling us how to assemble the wagon so that the wheels don't fall off. I have some solar lights that I just set up and it came with a manual with instructions and how to um, assemble it. Um, I mean, anything that you purchase nowadays, it comes with an owner's manual so guess what when we buy a product it comes with the owner's manual instructing us and how to assemble the parts the manuals the manual has clear instructions for us to follow but your um the manual has clear instructions for us to follow um put your hand up if anybody have any manuals at home you have a manual drawer or a ziploc bag that you just keep manuals i know i do um um, well, if you're finished assembling a part and you have, if I'm setting up my kid's wagon and I have a tire leave over and I have parts leave over, then, um, then my kids are in trouble. All right. If you're setting up something and it, you have spare parts left over, you are, it means that you're not following the, the owner's manual. You're not following the instructions. The Bible is the owner's manual. God, who is the manufacturer, the one who created us, the one who created us, um, uh, Psalm 24 verse 1 says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God created us. He, give, he gives us um, uh, 
God is our manufacturer. He created us and he gave us his word as instruction so that we can know how to function on the earth. Let me say that again. The word of God is our manual. It gives us instructions on how to, to, to function on the earth. The manual, the Bible, which is, is uh, it, um, it gives us precise instru instructions that if we follow it to the T, we will operate at our full potential as suggested by the manufacturer who is God. God's word is our roadmap. I have a road uh, map here of Paris. God's word is our roadmap. All right. It's our roadmap. It is our GPS. I'm not talking about uh, the global positioning system. I'm talk talking about God's positioning system. It is our GPS. It is our pathfinder and navigator. No, I'm not talking about the truck. I'm not talking about the car, but the word of God is our pathfinder. It's our navigator. It leads us to the right path and it keeps us on track. That's what a map does, right? That's what a GPS does. And when you read God's word, he gives us clear instructions. He gives us clear direction. Again, it is up to us to stay on the right path. When we detour, we're talking about Bible 101, why we should follow God's word, why we should read the Bible. When we detour, God's word navigates us back to the right path so we can reach our final destination. So we can know how the God's word gives us instruction so we can know how to handle and the pressures of life and life and the pressures of lives and so that we can overcome and get to the other side. Every morning, I start my day. The first thing I do when I get up, I start my day with the word of God. I don't, when I, I don't take up my phone, the only thing I take up my phone to do is to turn off the alarm. I don't take up my phone, scroll on social media, check my email, go on Instagram, none of that. And I must confess, um, that is why I don't come on the devotionals in the mornings. I check them out at a later time. And, and, um, and so forgive me if I'm not doing it the right way, but what I do um, is I make sure I get up and I read God's word and I get clear directions for the day, all right? Matthew 6 verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. I read God's word every morning so that I can get, get clear directions. I don't do it as a religious duty or if Pastor Chantel or Pastor Kwame or anybody from church call me to say, oh, did you read your Bible today, Sister Simone, so I can get on the pat on the back? No, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a vertical relationship. It's me and God thing. It's not, it has nothing to do with you. I want to get instructions for my day. I want to get clarity for my day. Not only that, to the word of God, it prepares us for the day ahead. Sometimes when you read, and that's why, and again, Joshua 1 verse 7 and 8 says, read the word of God, meditate upon it. And when we read God's word and meditate upon it, sometimes we go through or we face some situations in life throughout the day. And guess what? It's the same word of God that comes back and that administers to us and waters our soul. So that's why it's very important that we set the course of the day by reading God's word. Psalm 119 and verse 105, it says, his word is a lamp unto my feet or a GPS, God's positioning system. It's our roadmap. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I will hide your word in my heart that I will not sin against God. If you want to live right, read God's word. Not, you're, not that you're going to be perfect but you're gonna to strive to be what God tells you to be in his word. Psalms 32 verse eight says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way he should go. If you don't understand which version I'm reading, I'm, I, that's from the King James, but take up the NLT or the NIV or which version that you can relate to. But Psalm 32 eight says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. And some versions say, I will watch over you with mine, with mine eye. God's word, it gives instructions to trust him with all our hearts. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. He gave us instructions like the Ten Commandments. And let me tell you, in Deuteronomy 5, and let me tell you, it's not limited to Ten Commandments. There are many more commandments. There are many more instructions in God's word. He gave his promises 
that we will he will never leave us nor forsake us in joshua 1 he, he mentions that before maybe in verse 5 and 6 he talks about that but deuteronomy 31 verse 6 and hebrews 13 verse 5 i'm a little bit over by time but i'm going to wrap up here it talks about that he will never leave us or forsake us god's word gives us instructions he said that he is the way the truth and the life john 14 and verse 6 and John 15, verse 10 and 11 talks about if you keep God's commandments, if you be, obey my teaching, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. Ah, <sighs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> Need I say more? Don't just flip the word of God. Don't just glance or don't just get up and you want to read the Bible and you just open the Bible. Okay, I'm going to read uh, the Bible and it says, eat friends and drink, drink your fill of love. Wow, what a revelation. You can't do that. You can't just flip open the Bible or glance at it. You have to, you have to let the word of God apply. You have to spend time in in reading God's word. Otherwise, you will live an unfulfilled life because you still have missing parts and you will not operate according to the manufacturer's instruction, not living in God's will, not trusting in God's word, not trusting in God's plan, not having God's peace and God's provision and all of that, and not even receiving his salvation or eternal life. Sometimes we'll keep a copy of our owner's manual just in case we need to go back to get the warranty information. If you want eternal life, read God's word and how you can get eternal life. Imagine you have about 100 items in your homes that came with an owner's manual. Well, God's owner's manual is an all-in-one. It came with 66 books. It's comprised of 66 books. And each book gives specific instructions on righteousness, or uh, righteous it, so that we can be in right standing with God. It gives us specific detail and clear instructions on how to operate and function. Everything concerning your life, situation and need, there is a word of God in the manual for it. There is a word of God for you in God's manual. So if you're not reading your Bible, you're in trouble. If you're reading your Bible, good. If you're not reading your Bible, you're in trouble. But guess what? If you have dusted Bibles, your lives will be dusted. Dusted Bibles lead to dusted lives. Is your Bible dusted this morning? Dust it off. Pick it up. Read it. Know where to, if you don't know where to start, you can start with Genesis. If you're a new in Christ, if you're a babe in Christ, if you're recently born again, start with the new testament it um with saint john and i recommend everyone to get a study bible my bible i have a life application study bible and um i recommend you get a study bible so that you can understand god's word so that it, you, it can be broken down verse by verse so that you can understand it and how you can apply it to your life my the life application pretty much you can apply the the steps the instructions for and it gives examples for everyday living so i recommend everyone to get a study bible there are over 50 different versions of the bible we have the amplified king james niv nlt whatever it is get you a bible dust off your bible dust off your bible read your bible pray every day and you will grow on five minutes over my time but thank you everyone for joining this morning. Again, this is Bible 101 and this is Simone Brissett Tate coming to you live from Breakers Covenant Church International. And we spoke about um, foundations of the Bible, Bible 101, why we should read our Bibles because it's God's instructions. It's our roadmap. It's our manual. It's our GPS, God's positioning system so that we can navigate through life. If you want a relationship with God, read God's word. If you want to know God, read God's word. 
If you know, want to know how to treat people and to love people, read God's word. If you want to know about yourself, read God's word. God bless you this morning. Read God's word. Read God's word. Meditate upon it. I love you. God bless you. Have a good day.